In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this entity perfect for your backrooms videos, or if you just wanna creep yourself out, kinda of looks like a paper clip that's gone unhinged, it's running around on the street, nobody knows its name, it's just yelling at everybody, but uh, before we begin, I think it actually has something to say to us. Hey, you. Um, yeah, what's going on? Are you staying safe online? I mean, yeah, I just do my work on my laptop, sometimes I bring it into a coffee shop or something. Stop right there, you dummy. Do you even realize that your personal data is susceptible to being stolen if you're not using a virtual private network? Oh, oh yeah, you mean like a VPN to keep my data secure? Secure and private, I've heard of those. I mean, personally, I use the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. Really, as far as I see it, there are two reasons to be using Surfshark VPN. The first one is the one that I see as the most obvious, and that is keeping your data and whatever you're doing on your computer, laptop, whatever, uh, secure so that if people are snooping around, they can't get access to it. Imagine all the embarrassing things you do online. Do you want anybody to potentially know what that is? The second main reason to use Surfshark VPN VPN is it makes it look like your computer is in a different place with just one click. What is this useful for? Well, uh, as you may or may not know, certain websites like Amazon, any online retailer, uh, they have certain deals depending on where you are, what country, what state, stuff like this. So if you can just say that you're in a different country, you know, with just a single click, then you can get discounts. If you're like watching entertainment like Netflix, Hulu, whatever, um, same kind of deal. And just some stats to wet your willy. When you use Surfshark VPN, you can use it on a unlimited number of devices when you have your account. So you can use it on your phone, your computer, or whatever else you got. PC, Mac, Linux, on your TV Fire Stick, on your phone, Android, iPhone, basically anything that you're gonna be using. 24 seven support a no log policy, which means they're not themselves going to collect your data, which kind of defeats the point. So no log policy and a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you tried out and you're not about it, get your money back. Now that you're ready to start taking your online activity privacy seriously, you can get a 24 month plan with Surfshark VPN. And instead of just getting that and you know that that's what it is, you can click my link in the description and use promo code cube to get 83% off. That is a lot of percent and you get an additional three months for free of Surfshark VPN. So if you want to use that deal, use the link in the description with promo code cube or just use the QR code that should be somewhere on the screen. And now back to the tutorial. Okay, and we're back. Let me show you how to make this thing. It's super simple. It's geometry nodes. Maybe you'll learn something. So uh, with this cube, go to geometry nodes, apply a geometry nodes modifier, because everything we're going to do is going to be getting rid of this cube and replacing it with stuff. So delete this. What we're going to do is we're going to start off in a way that seems kind of strange, but believe me, it will make sense. So drop in a mesh line mesh line is basically just going to be a way for us to get a bunch of points um, eventually we're going to turn it into more points but for now you can keep it at 10. what i want to do is i want to take this line and distort it in a way that looks random and chaotic but still kind of smooth and fluid and all this whenever we want to distort something you always use a set position so we are going to reset the position using how are we going to reset it uh, using some noise so we can use a noise texture uh, what you're going to notice is this noise texture does add in the source of randomness but it kind of offsets it so you can see it's kind of been brought from the center uh, in this direction by actually the vector 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 the technicalities don't matter but the ways to fix it is uh, that that does matter. So take this, subtract it by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's going to be the, the uh, correction. And then I'm also going to add a scaling parameter that's going to let us increase or decrease the intensity of this. So we have a source of randomness. Now we got it. We got to. We got it. <laughs> we don't have it, but we need to make it look good. So take the uh, end point of the line and bring it down. So we're still going to have 10 points but we're kind of condensing it down. Now, ideally I'd want to set it to zero, uh, but that creates a bit of a logic uh, loop because we're going to have one point that's just offset somewhere. So just set it to 0 0.01 and you're going to see we have the tiniest bit of randomness here. Uh, bring up the scale. That should add a bit of chaos to this. And we can also bring up the scale of our randomness and check it out. We have this kind of, you know, random looking thing. If I increase the uh, vertex count, we get way more. It's kind of like a random walk. So I'm going to set it to like 100. 
And you're going to notice if we now take our noise and animate it, we're getting, whoa, every time it's going to take our basically 100 points that are right in the middle, and it's going to distort the ever-living shit out of them, right? Uh, but if we take our W slider and change it by something very gradual, so I'm going to take the time in seconds, which is way too much, right? But we take it and we slow it down by enough. So I'm just going to keep dividing it by a larger and larger and larger number. And eventually we're going to get there. It might take a big division. But now you can see it's starting to look smoother. Let's try 400. There we go. Um, if you slow this uh, animation down enough, uh, it will be chaotic, but you can almost see the fluidity to it, okay? So something like that. And again, the amount of stuff you have going on here is dependent on the count. So maybe I'm going to bring it down to 50. And I want it to be smooth, not this jagged looking thing. And we actually have a node for this. It's a fillet curve, but of course, you need to turn this into a curve uh, to utilize that. So we're going to turn this into a curve temporarily. Just so we can fillet curve. Fillet curve is basically like beveling. It's going to take out our point. So let's say we have like something here with a jagged point. It's going to take it and round it out, kind of like a bevel. So you set this to poly. By the way, limit radius to get rid of the weirdness. And we increase this, and you can see it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother. We'll set it to 10. And you can also set the radius of this until it's like nice and smooth and fluid. Up to you, though. So this is kind of the essence of it. And now all we need to do is make sure that it is a renderable paperclip looking thing. But it's smooth. It's chaotic. It's got the right vibe. Um, okay. To make it renderable, we need to have it be not a curve anymore, but now back to a mesh, something with thickness. So we're, we went into a curve just for this. And then we're going to go curve to mesh. Boop. And let's use a circle as our contour. So it's almost like we're going to sweep a circle along its, um, along its path. Look at that. Really, we just made a cloud generator, didn't we? I swear I've seen, uh, have taken shits that look like that. That kind of looks like, um, what does it look like? It kind of looks like the way you'd imagine, like, uh, What's the word in uh, cancer terminology when something metastasizes? Uh, whatever. It looks bad. Take the radius. Bring it down. If it's still looking crazy, bring it even further down. And I think that looks pretty good. It's almost like thick enough that you're like, oh, this thing has mass to it, but it's still super thin and lanky. It kind of looks like a Pokemon design or something. Um, okay, so we have this. Let's just throw a material onto it because right now if we look at it through rendered mode, in uh, cycles. It's just going to look boring. Uh, so what I'm going to do is before I add my material, which is ultimately just going to be a simple metal, I'm just going to load an HDRI into our scene so that we have something to reflect off of. And then for this, we are going to, at the very end, we're going to set material to a material. And then let's make that material, which is this one, <laughs> very convoluted. Uh, let's make it a metallic which looks interesting, but I want it to be shiny. There we go. I like the look of that. And if you want to give it kind of a more spiritual, I don't know, kind of heavenly looking thing, we can use its Fresnel, uh, which is going to update all the time and look cool, as a emission strength and give this thing a subtle, a subtle glow, like a red. And there we go. Let's see what this looks like in context on a plane. I feel like this thing shouldn't be red. I feel like it should be yellow, to be honest. There we go. Uh, we'll see what it looks like on a plane, and then let's get rid of the background. Yeah, that's, that's essentially what I was going for. And a big thing of what's going to make this look uh, super interesting, I think, is when you render this, it's already looking interesting, right? Because it's basically just sheer randomness. I believe, hopefully this is the case, if we enable motion blur, um, it should calculate some motion blur for us. And since this is a thing that's always moving, I would imagine that looks pretty dope. So let's see. Uh, render. Yeah. 
this thing is basically a, a big motion blur. I don't want to, there's a word in my head, but this is a sponsored video. We'll, we'll say mukbang. This is a motion blur mukbang. We'll go for that. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's how you make the entity. Um, I hope you uh, learned something, and I'm not going to do the whole spiel since this is a sponsored video, but uh, Patreon link in the description if you're interested in that. You can get the blend file for this, but uh, thank you for watching. Bye. You, you can leave now.